These are the top 10 most anticipated sneaker releases still left in 2023. So rather than organizing this list based on my own personal preference, I'm going to organize it based on release dates. So the release dates that are farthest away will be at the end of the list, and that of course means that the release dates happening soon will be at the beginning of the list. And I know this is a top 10 list, but there was two other shoes that I really wanted to add, so they'll be honorable mentions. Starting things off with the first honorable mention, we've got the Travis Scott Jordan Cut the Check. So this shoe is Travis Scott's first signature sneaker and is a brand new silhouette from Jordan brand. So far, we haven't seen any official images of this shoe. However, it is leaked that apparently one of the colorways of this sneaker will be dropping in 2023. However, we don't know the exact release date yet. While this shoe is a brand new silhouette, it definitely has some Nike inspiration. In fact, it kind of looks like the shoe is a modified Nike dunk with some skateboarding DNA. Also, it seems like some colorways of the shoe feature straps and some don't. I'm not sure if that's just because the strap is removable or maybe it's a completely different silhouette. Until they officially announce this shoe, we don't really have any idea. And like I said, we don't know which one of these colorways is dropping in 2023 or even officially if any of these colorways are dropping in 2023. There's just some leaks and rumors that are going around, so I figured it'd be good to put this shoe in the video because it's very possible that one of these colorways drops sooner than later. We just don't know when or how much or even which colorway. I will say though, I am definitely looking forward to this sneaker. It's always cool to get a hyped up new Jordan silhouette. This reminds me a lot of like when Kanye dropped the Nike Air Yeezys, and I'm definitely excited to get a pair in hand to give you guys a full review. Next up, the second honorable mention is the J Balvin Air Jordan 3 Medellin Sunset. And out of all all of the J Balvin collaborations with Jordan Brand, this is by far my favorite. The sneaker is incredibly clean and incredibly wearable. The upper of the shoe comes in a white tumbled leather accented by yellow edges and of course yellow hardware. And as the name Medellin Sunset would make you believe, the shoe is inspired by a sunset. So of course you've got sort of a gradient from like a yellow to a red to a black. And that's actually my favorite detail of the shoe, the gradient on the heel tab. I just think it's really, really clean and really different. As far as release date, the J Balvin Air Jordan 3 Medellin Sunsets drop officially on September 2nd for a retail price of 200 150 bucks. At number 10 is the 2023 Air Jordan 8 Playoff Retro. This OG colorway of the Air Jordan 8 is also known as the True Red colorway and was first worn by Michael Jordan in the second half of the 92-93 season and of course got its name from the 1993 playoffs. In terms of Air Jordan 8s, this is either one of the most or the most popular colorways of all time, obviously because of its history, because of its wearability, and because it's one of the original colorways. I mean, of course you got the Aquas and the Bugs Bunnies and shoes like that, but this is the shoe that I really think of whenever I think of the Air Jordan 8. Maybe it's because of what Michael Jordan did in this shoe. I just love it. This is my favorite Air Jordan 8 colorway of all time. This shoe comes in an almost entirely black upper accented by red, white, and blue hits around the sneaker. And like I said, it's one of the OG Air Jordan 8 colorways. So if you're trying to build a Jordan clock like I have over in the side of my room, this is a colorway that you're gonna need. Ow! In case you guys haven't seen my channel or forgot about the $20 sneaker collection, here's the clock. It's very heavy. Still haven't mounted it yet. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. Oh no, I'm dropping everything. I really did a number on my foot. Whew, I need to figure out what to do with that clock, man. As far as release date, this shoe is supposed to release on September 30th for a retail price of $210. Ow. Coming in at number nine is the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low Golf. So for whatever reason, Jordan Brand and Travis Scott decided to make the last Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 collaboration a golf shoe. Now I'm not mad about that because I've been golfing a lot recently. I still suck, but uh, it'd be really cool to wear a pair of Travis's on the, uh, I still don't even know what to call it. Is it the field? It's not the field. The Lynx? I think it's the Lynx. While this is not my favorite Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 low colorway, because it's a golf shoe, I've got to have a pair, and I know for a fact it's going to be impossible for me to grab a pair on the sneakers app, so I'm going to have to pay resale for it, which I probably won't because I just don't need to spend $1,000 on a pair of golf shoes. That being said, unfortunately, because the Air Jordan 1 low golfs are basically standard Air Jordan 1s with a slightly different traction pattern, I'm sure a lot of people are going to buy these just to rock casually. And while yes, I don't think this is my favorite Travis Scott Jordan 1 low, the design is still very clean. The upper of the shoe comes in an olive suede material accented by the sort of off-white overlay and of course a black backwards Nike swoosh. I really love this shoe and I just know the chance of me getting these is ridiculously low. So is it worth even trying? I don't know. Another notable change to the shoe other than the golf outsole is the golf branding on the tongue of the sneaker, which again, I don't think is gonna deter non-golfers from getting this shoe, but at the end of the day, people can buy what they wanna buy. If they wanna buy a golf shoe and rock it casually, that's fine with me. Sucks, but still fine with me. When it comes to release, this shoe is slated to drop on October 13th for a retail price of 170 bucks. And you know what? If you're looking for a pair of socks that would match this colorway perfectly, or maybe just a new pair of golf socks, make sure to check out my sock brand, Apothecary. This upcoming Friday, we're dropping the Wavy Collection on a 
apothecary.com, which includes this shirt as well as four different sock colorways that all feature these really cool embroidered smiley faces. I don't know if that's in focus. Probably my favorite collection that we've dropped this year. I know I'm biased because this is a collection that I designed. We have a couple different designers on one of them. And I'm really stoked on how the designs came out. So if you guys want to grab this collection, it drops this Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time on apothecary.com. Next up at number eight, the women's Air Jordan 1 bread set. So I've talked about this shoe a lot, mainly because the bread one is my favorite sneaker of all time. So this variation of the shoe is definitely something I can see myself picking up. And for those of you that might not know, this shoe originally released as a men's exclusive, limited to only 500 pairs in New York City back in, I believe, 2016. And I've told this story a million times because like I said, I've talked about this shoe a lot. I was on the way to work and I passed the event for that sneaker. There was no line. And rather than going in, I went to a job that I later got laid off from. So big regrets there. And now the limited version of the shoe probably resells for two to three grand, which I'm not gonna spend on a pair of sneakers. I have, but I won't do it again. I mean, I'm not planning on it. So this is a shoe that I wanna grab to fill a void that was created almost seven years ago. Now essentially what this shoe is, is a bread Jordan one that's not made out of leather, but is instead covered in a satin material. It's still the same exact color blocking and colorway as the standard Air Jordan one breads. The only difference is the material and also the wings logo on the lateral side that is stitched instead of pressed. It's a super clean look and one that I've gotta have. And while sure, I would rather have the much more limited version of the shoe because I'm a hype beast. I'll still grab it because I really like it. And I guess the good news is for me, I don't have much longer to wait. I've already waited seven years. This shoe should be dropping on October 18th for a retail price of 180 bucks. Number seven is the Air Jordan 1 Low 85 Neutral Gray. So over the last couple years, we've actually had a lot of neutral gray releases. We've had the high 85s and the standard low neutral grays, but now we're finally getting sort of a combination of both with the 85 cut of an Air Jordan Low neutral gray. And I'm actually really stoked for this release. This shoe features a white leather upper, and of course, because this is an 85 cut of the shoe, the leather is a little bit thicker and honestly a little bit more premium. It also takes a little bit longer to break in than standard leather, but once you get it to break in, it feels amazing. You also get a light gray Nike swoosh, a cream colored midsole, and a gray outsole. And when it comes to sneakerheads, it seems like people are preferring Air Jordan 1 Lows this year over Air Jordan 1 Highs. I don't know if that's just because we're in the summertime and people are wearing more low top sneakers, or if Air Jordan 1 Lows are just becoming more popular popular than highs, but either way, I do think there's gonna be a pretty large demand for this shoe, especially because it probably will be limited because it's an 85 cut, and it's a sneaker that I definitely plan on trying to grab. According to Sneaker News, the Air Jordan 1 Low 85 Neutral Gray should release on October 25th for a retail price of 170 bucks. Coming in at number six is the 2023 Air Jordan 12 Cherry. So this colorway of the 12 originally dropped back in 1997 and was made incredibly popular when Michael Jordan wore it during his fifth championship season. The shoe comes in a relatively simple makeup, You've got a white leather upper accented by red hits on the mud guard and on the outsole of the shoe. This is definitely one of the cleaner Air Jordan 12 colorways. Personally, I think I prefer the flu games, that black and red look to this cherry colorway, but still incredibly clean. And while this is not a colorway that I'm that excited about personally, it's still a colorway that I know a lot of people out there are gonna wanna grab. It should be dropping on October 28th for a retail price of 210 bucks. Moving on to number five, we've got the Air Jordan 1 High Royal Reimagined. So over the last few years, Jordan brand has been reimagining some of their more popular silhouettes. And by reimagining, I mean slightly changing the original colorway, whether that's changing the material or maybe changing the color of a part of the shoe, but nothing major. With this Royal One reimagined though, it seems like they're really changing things up pretty dramatically. Essentially what Jordan Brand is doing is taking the classic OG Royal colorway and changing it from a leather material to a suede material. In fact, at SneakerCon DC, I got a really good look at this shoe at the Rejuvenator booth, and it looks like the entire upper of the shoe is suede, which honestly I'm on the fence about. I still love the colorway, I still love the shoe, but the suede, while I love suede, it's something bad, it just doesn't seem right. It's kind of like the exact opposite of what they're doing with the Bread 4 reimagines next year, that uh, instead of coming in suede or coming in leather, I, I don't really exactly understand why they're switching out these materials. It seems unnecessary to me, but hey, they're gonna try it, and I guess that's fine with them. It's their brand, it's their IP, they can do whatever they want. And you know what, I can't be mad that they're experimenting. I know I give Jordan Brand a lot of crap because I think they release a lot of crap sometimes, but it's good that they're trying new things even though a majority of their business is selling retros. So while this is not a shoe that I'm incredibly excited for, I still appreciate that they're trying something different. I'm still happy that we're getting another Royal One colorway because I think the last time we got a pair of Royals was back in 2017. Actually, this is a shoe that I'd love to know your thoughts on in the comment section down below. Also, I've done a full sort of short form review of the sneaker on my TikTok at Real Seth Fowler. So if you guys wanna check out that short form review, make sure to click the link in the top of the description below and follow me on TikTok. We're trying to hit 100K by the end of the year. Originally, I was gonna say 100K by the end of August, but that's just 
That's not gonna happen. Unless you guys can make it happen, maybe you can, I don't know. But getting to the release information, these Royal Reimagined Ones apparently drop on November 4th for 180 bucks. Not cheap, $10 more than a standard pair, but also not too expensive, I guess. Moving on to number four on the list, we've got two different colorways of the Amo Manier Air Jordan 5 collaboration. So apparently these two colorways have different release dates, so the black colorway, which is the one that I'm gonna be focusing on, should release on November 22nd, and the light bone colorway apparently releases on December 1st. I don't know if those dates are set in stone. I wouldn't be surprised if they both release on the same day or maybe one releases exclusively to Amma Manier's website and one releases on the sneakers app, I'm not sure. But uh, either way, there are two colorways dropping this year. There is actually a third colorway, but I think it's a women's exclusive and it may or may not drop this year, I'm not sure. But either way, I'm gonna focus on the black colorway, one, because we have more images of this shoe, and two, because I think it's gonna be the more popular of the three colorways, is my guess. Again, let me know in the comment section down below, I'm not sure, but this is a colorway that I'm personally drawn to. And in terms of design, this shoe is kind of standard fare for a pair of Air Jordan 5s. You've got a black nubuck upper accented by a reflective tongue, which comes in sort of a silvery color. Of course, you've got the Amma Manier A logo on one of the tongues. You've also got this really cool netting detail on the side of the shoe that instead of featuring that sort of pill-shaped detail or cutout that we usually have, you've actually got the Amma Manier A logo sort of repeated on the netting. I think it looks super clean. And realistically, the netting doesn't do too much on the side of the sneaker because it's backed by some sort of fabric that really doesn't allow for a lot of airflow. So they could pretty much remove that detail altogether and you probably wouldn't even notice it even when playing basketball. So the fact that there is seemingly less ventilation on the side of the shoe shouldn't make too much of a difference. I actually love the way this detail looks on the side of the sneaker, and weirdly enough, it's my favorite part of the shoe. The midsole of this black colorway comes in black and is accented by these maroon colored shark teeth, and the overall design of the shoe is rounded off by this sort of pre-aged outsole that comes in a semi-translucent yellow. Oh, and actually, I almost forgot. I just looked at the picture and I saw it, but there is the Amo Manier logo printed on the air bubble on the side of the sneaker, which is kind of cool. It's a very small detail, but one that does separate the shoe from other Air Jordan 5 collaborations. I've never seen that done before. As far as the light bone colorway, it should be a very similar look, except instead of having black suede on the upper, you've got sort of a, a light bone or a sort of almost greenish gray color on the upper. Like I said, both of these shoes seem to have different release dates, but the retail price should be the same at $225 each. Coming in at a very fitting number three, we've got the Air Jordan 3 Fear. So the last time this sneaker dropped was back in 2013, and since then, this pack of Fear sneakers has become incredibly popular. From what I can tell, this 2023 version version of the Fear 3s is very similar to the original. You've got a dark gray suede upper accented by bright orange hits. You've got sort of a reverse colored elephant print. You've got this really nice gradient from like a tan to a black on the midsole of the sneaker. And of course, the look is rounded off by a white hit on the bottom half of the midsole and a red air unit. It's not an OG colorway of the 3s, but I think it's a pair that a lot of people missed out on and really would have liked to have grabbed back in 2013. And now we're getting a chance to grab this sneaker once again. And honestly, I don't know how popular it's going to be because 3s are popular, but based on what people seem to be like, in 2023, I don't know if the hype is going to be there. Regardless, I'm stoked for it. It's a shoe that I'm going to try and pick up, at least for retail, and one that I'd be happy to rock. And for those of you interested in grabbing the Fear 3s, it should be dropping on November 25th for a retail price of 210 bucks. Moving on to number two, we've got one of the most anticipated sneakers of the year, the Air Jordan 11 DMP 2023. This shoe originally released back in 2006 as part of the Defining Moments pack, and in that pack, you got the Air Jordan 11 and the Air Jordan 6. And I believe back in 2020, we got the Air Jordan 6 6 retroing on its own, and now in 2023 we're getting the Air Jordan 11. And it looks like this year our Holiday 11 release is going to be the DMP 11s. Now I'm sure you've noticed by now, but every year around the beginning of December, Jordan brand releases a holiday pair of 11s, whether it's a classic retro like the Breads, or the Space Jams, or even the Concords. This year we're getting sort of a retro, because it is slightly different than the original DMPs. And it's also almost a Concord. So we're getting, a, I guess, a, a new take on the DMP 11s and uh, it's gonna be our holiday release. So this is gonna be the main Jordan release of December. Like I said, this pair does look a lot like a pair of Concord 11s. However, there are some differences. First of all, instead of the mesh on the upper, you've got this white tumbled leather. And you've also got gold accents on both the 23 numbering on the heel of the shoe and on the Jumpman. And then the detail that I'm not too excited about and I kind of wish they had done differently is the milky colored outsole. I really love semi-translucent blue outsoles. I think the icy outsole is a lot cleaner. But let's be honest, in a couple years, the outsole is going to look like this anyway. So I guess Jordan Brand is just getting it done early. I'm sure they're going to make some story behind it. I'm sure there's a reason why they did it this way. I guess it sort of ties in with the gold better. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, it's a dope looking pair of sneakers. I'm happy to have the DMP 11s back in a way. And uh, it's a pair that I'm definitely planning to pick up. Although I do already have a pair of Concords and I don't really wear them that much. And this pair I'm probably going to wear even less. So for a retail price of $225, which is what this pair is going to sell for, grabbing this pair on December 9th might not be the right move for me. But I'm probably 
still gonna do it regardless. And then coming in at number one is the Nike Kobe 6 Reverse Grinch. So as you can probably guess from the name of this shoe, this is literally the Grinch Kobe 6s, except instead of green on the upper, they switched it with the accent color, which is red. So now it's a red Kobe 6 Grinch with green accents instead of a green Kobe 6 Grinch with red accents. Now I'll be honest, I prefer the regular Kobe 6 Grinches I think because I'm used to them and while I didn't have the original pair of the shoe I did get the 2020 release of the shoe so it's nice to have at least one of the pairs. And what's weird is that I usually prefer red sneakers over green sneakers but again I think that there's some sort of nostalgia kind of hitting me with this shoe so I definitely prefer the original to this new version of the shoe. That being said, I don't think it's a bad look. So as you can see in these images the shoe comes in a red snakeskin upper accented by a printed on black Nike swoosh. The rest of the shoe also comes in entirely red. You've got a red midsole, a red outsole. The only color that's slightly different is the green hits that you find on the laces and also on the logos. It's definitely a very clean pair of sneakers though. I like the fact that they went with a black Nike swoosh on the side of the sneaker instead of a green Nike swoosh. It makes the shoe look a little bit more all year round wearable. It's hard to wear Christmas shoes when it's not Christmas. And honestly, I'm happy that Nike's bringing back some Christmas theming. They stopped doing that for a little while. Back in like the mid 2010s and even the, I guess the late 2000s, they were releasing a bunch of Christmas themed Nike basketball sneakers and then they stopped and now they're finally bringing that back and I would love to see more themed sneakers from Nike not just like individually themed shoes but like whole lines of sneakers whether it's like a, a Halloween basketball pack or a Christmas basketball pack or a Thanksgiving basketball pack just something like that those across the brand themes are really really cool to see and we haven't really had them in a while so I'm stoked on this and if you're looking to grab a pair of the reverse Grinches it's looking like this pair is gonna drop on December 16th for 180 bucks but that wraps up the list thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one